Have you ever asked yourself, what happens when we die? It's a question that lingers in the back of everyone's mind at some point. It's a mystery that, despite our best efforts, remains largely unsolved. Death, the inevitable finale of life, is a universal experience that we all must face. Yet it is shrouded in enigma and often feared due to its unknown nature. But what if we could lift the veil? What if we could explore the uncharted territory of the afterlife, not through spiritual conjecture, but scientific investigation? Intriguing, isn't it? Well, that's precisely what we're going to do today. We're going to unravel the enigmatic threads of death, delve into its biological process and discuss the fascinating science that occurs when life ceases. So fasten your seatbelts, keep an open mind and get ready for an enlightening journey. Let's dive into the fascinating science behind the final frontier. Death is the point where all our body's vital functions stop. It's a simple statement, but one that carries immense weight. The heart, our life's engine, ceases its rhythmic pumping of blood, and with it, the distribution of oxygen and nutrients throughout our body comes to a halt. Simultaneously, our lungs surrender their constant inflow and outflow of air, leaving our cells starved of their much-needed oxygen. Meanwhile, our brain, the command center of our entire body, experiences a significant slowdown in its activity. The billions of neurons that once fired off instructions and information now fade into silence, their electrical signals dwindling before eventually flatlining. This cessation of brain activity is often what we refer to when we say that someone has passed on. But the story doesn't quite end there. You see, even after the heart has stopped and the brain has flatlined, there are still intriguing happenings to explore, particularly when it comes to brain waves and consciousness. Brain waves are electrical signals that show brain activity. These intricate patterns of neural oscillation are essentially the symphony of our mind and they play a crucial role in everything we do, think and feel. Now, the interesting part is that some studies suggest these brain waves might continue for a few minutes after the heart stops. Yes, you heard it right. Even after the heart ceases to beat, the brain may still be playing its symphony. But here's the catch. These brain waves don't necessarily denote consciousness or awareness. It's like the music is playing, but there's no one around to hear it. This lingering brain activity is one of the most fascinating and mysterious aspects of death. Despite advances in neuroscience, we still don't know if a person experiences anything after their brain activity stops. It's a riddle that continues to perplex and intrigue scientists around the world. But don't go anywhere just yet. Let's look into the decomposition process. Right after death, rigor mortis sets in, making the body rigid. This is caused by a chemical change in the muscles and usually begins within two to six hours after death, peaking at around 12 hours. But this rigidity is only temporary. After about three days, the body starts to relax again as decomposition takes over. Here's where things get a bit, well, gruesome. Bacteria that were once kept in check by our immune system start to break down tissues and cells. These tiny microorganisms are particularly abundant in the gut and they begin their work from the inside out. As they break down organic matter, gases are released, causing the body to bloat and emit a distinctive smell, often described as sweetly pungent. This process of decomposition, while not the most pleasant topic, is a fascinatingly natural part of the cycle of life. But what happens at the cellular level? Cells don't all die instantly after the heart stops. This statement might surprise you, but it's a fascinating truth about our biology. You see, not every cell in our body is alike. Some cells, especially those in the brain, are incredibly sensitive and may cease function within minutes of oxygen deprivation. However, others, like skin cells, can soldier on for hours or even days. This stark difference has led scientists to investigate whether we can revive certain cells even after what we define as clinical death. Now let's dive into the morbidly captivating sequence of organ failure. When one organ fails, it can set off a tragic domino effect. This cascade is relentless and often unstoppable, even with modern medical interventions. It's a grim reality, but understanding this process can help us develop better life-saving techniques in medicine. Now let's talk about near-death experiences. 
Many people report near-death experiences with feelings of peace, light, and even out-of-body sensations. These accounts, mesmerizing as they are, don't quite fit into our conventional understanding of the dying process. Some theories suggest these experiences may be the result of the brain releasing a flood of naturally occurring chemicals like endorphins and DMT in response to the stress of dying. Others propose that they could be the brain's way of trying to make sense of unusual sensations and perceptions as it shuts down. While these theories are intriguing, they are still just theories. The reality is we don't yet fully understand why these experiences occur. However, the primary goal of studying death isn't to unravel the mystery of the afterlife, but to improve our understanding of life. This knowledge is primarily used to improve resuscitation techniques and extend life, focusing on helping people live longer, healthier lives. While the exact experience of death remains a mystery, researchers are constantly learning more. Death is a natural part of life. Today, we've delved into the science behind this inevitable journey, from the cessation of body functions to the fascinating mystery of consciousness and brain waves. We've taken a closer look at the decomposition process, a natural yet often misunderstood part of death. We also explored the intriguing world of cell biology, revealing that cells can survive for hours or even days after clinical death. This research could potentially revolutionize resuscitation techniques and extend life. And let's not forget the captivating phenomenon of near-death experiences, which still puzzle scientists and researchers. Understanding the science of death isn't about morbidity, but about finding peace in knowledge and focusing on extending and improving the quality of life. If you have any questions or thoughts, leave them down in the comments below. And for more science content, hit that subscribe button. Thanks for watching.